When launching Edilus for the first time, we land on the program's homepage, where we have access to the typical file management tools to open documents. We can open them by searching on the computer, or by opening the Recent Documents section, or simply open the example files provided with the software. Notice that in the right area, we can go straight to the technical support services, the video tutorials, and the community forum. Here you can see how easy it is to get various types of support content based on our search keywords. For example, if I search for reinforcement, we get all the relevant videos for learning how to work with reinforcements, viewing them within the different design and validation aspects through to how to customize them appropriately. From the home page we can create a new project. The program prompts us to specify which regulations we prefer to use in the calculation phase and also requests us to indicate the building type. Edilus consists of three different modules, reinforced concrete, steel and masonry structures. Each of these can be added with timber structures too. In the case of reinforced concrete buildings, just as it is important to specify whether the building is a new or an existing construction. If we want to model an existing building, whether it is reinforced concrete, steel or mixed, we also need to specify if we are dealing with the survey stage or the design stage. In this last case, we can choose whether it's an adaptation or an improvement project. Let's continue as if it were a new reinforced concrete project. Once the file is opened, we have a direct view of the Edilus interface. At the center you can see the project workspace. This is where we can see all of the different structural layout views including our level plans or the 3D views. To the left of the software interface, we have the tree structure project navigator from where we can click and view the individual floor plans, the various levels and the 3D views. At the bottom we can consult the elements node, this is the program archive where beam and column profile types are stored. Materials, different soil types are also added here for reference. Further down, once the structure has been calculated, you can also access the individual structure level plans, the reinforcement tables and diagrams as well as the construction documents, i.e. the calculation report, geotechnical report, and so on. Jumping over to the right side of the interface, we can see the vertical toolboxes, such as the copy tab, background, and reinforcements. But we'll see more about these functions at a later stage during modeling. Seeing that these functions turn out to be very useful when defining the model in terms of reinforcement settings, minimum and maximum applicable rebar diameters, etc. Then we have the steel connections tab for steel structures. For the different types of connections, the program specifies regulatory references for the distances between screws. Here the structural engineer can truly achieve a correct structural model compliant with regulations. At the top we have the classic file, design, tools, windows, and question mark toolbar options, each with their own sub-menu options. For example, in the design menu, we can access the collection of structural members and parametric objects that we can choose from to define our structural model. So, before we begin, let me clarify one key point. Edilus works with an input of objects, which means that each element, each object that we add to our model, also contains the relevant information necessary to perform a structural analysis. For example, if we select the column pillar object, you'll notice that the properties box on the right also provides other possible options and attributes and descriptions. If we access the program file, that is in the browser, elements, beams, and column sections, we can locate the 30 by 50 section that we chose previously. If we change any of these characteristics or simply create a new section, for example, base 35 and height 55, you'll be able to see how these geometric characteristics adapt dynamically. Let's go back to the plan view. Add the column object, and then assign the 35 by 55 section that we had previously defined with this parametric object. 